Hey everybody. Well, I hadn't had a chance to show you this guy yet. This is a car I bought recently. I wasn't looking for another car, but I couldn't pass this one up. This is a 74 Plymouth Valiant. It's all original. It's in very good condition for the age. It's not perfect, but I'll be doing a full video on this car um, coming up. But right now I'm doing some diagnosis and troubleshooting, trying to see if I can get this thing to run again. It's been not running for several years. I was told that it uh, had an ignition system failure of some sort. So I'm intimately familiar with ignition systems on these cars. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've got the carburetor off of it. I was told that the carburetor had been rebuilt and overhauled, but uh, judging from the looks of it and judging from the smell of the gas that's in the tank back there, I thought, well, it's just a better idea to just go ahead and take this off and go through it again. So. It's a good thing I did. It was full of junk and crud again and all that. I'm not even I'm not even totally sure the carburetor is going to work, but I'm doing the best I can with it. We'll see what happens. But right now, I'm on this ignition system trying to sort that out. I've got my big book of Chrysler here. This is my uh, official Mopar Chrysler service manual, which is really, really indispensable on these cars. So I'm checking some things out. Let this car go by. Checking some things out with it, and my initial suspicion was this box over here. Another car go by. How do you have to live here? Anyway, that's the little dude that failed on that other Valiant and stopped the car in the middle of the intersection. <laughs> So that was my first suspicion, but I, I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and test everything like the book says. So I know that's been replaced. The guy told me it had been, and that's, you know, it doesn't, people replace those ballast resistors right there. That's the first thing they ever replace on one of these cars, these Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodges, whatever. They're sure that's what's wrong with it, but you can always tell when those go bad because it'll start up and run as long as you have the key turned to start but as soon as you let it off it quits and goes dead so that's a quick way of diagnosing that issue and it's not that because it doesn't have any spark so uh, I have another box put on it but I thought I'd go ahead and test like I said so I got over here to the distributor and I quickly found a problem Here's the distributor, if you can see in here. And this thing here, that's the pickup coil, or sometimes they call it something different than normally called a pickup coil. Well, first thing I noticed was that it doesn't appear to be screwed down to the distributor. Look at this. Now that's absolutely a no-no. It will never run right like that. Because with it doing that, the timing's just all over the place. This is your reluctor right here, this little wheel. You see it's it's just made, it's fixed onto this shaft of the distributor. And it has eight points. If this was a six cylinder, it'd have six little points on it. And that's what triggers this thing to make the spark fire. So that's kind of making it simple. But the next thing I took a look at and noticed was, look how far away the pickup coil is from these uh, these tips right here. Normally when the tip is next to this little thing right there it's supposed to be um, you know straight across. Like if you drew a line from here to here it would go straight through that tip and straight through that. This thing is way off over here. It's, it'll never work like that not even close. It was sitting here like this. That's that's not even close. It has the wrong appears to have the wrong reluctor in it. I mean, I'm sorry, the wrong pickup coil and it's not even attached to this distributor. What on earth, guys? I mean, <laughs> I know some people are not mechanically inclined, but that's ridiculous. So, anyway, I got to take that all apart. I got to pull that reluctor off and and uh, get that thing out of there and see what it is. Good Lord. I'll tell you something. There's a speed bump right here. 
And that's the most useless speed bump there is ever because people hit that thing, they go about 45 or 50 down through here and they hit that thing, slow down a little bit, and uh, just keep on trucking. You know, I'm not the, he slowed down, but I'm not the slowest driver ever at all, but you know what, the way people drive these days, I think they need to take and they need to raise that thing up about another foot and a half or so and make it jar your teeth out every time you hit it. That'll slow people down. Anyway, and here's something to note on this car. This is a 74 and it has this infamous starter interlock for the seat belts, which has been disconnected, but it's not that. This is a emergency start switch relay on it. In case the belts ever, that system ever acted up, you could come out here and trip that thing and it'd let you start it one time. But that's not it, so it starts with a key, so. All right, guys, I thought I'd just run you through that real quick, and we'll see what transpires here. See ya.